How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Knox Manning in Hollywood, taking you on another brief journey behind the scenes. Once again, we draw the curtain to watch a fragment of forgotten drama, a story of people and places already hidden in the background of destiny. Today, we shall meet a red-faced, lanky youth who found a career because he was broke and alone 10,000 miles from home. But first, a word from a familiar voice. Thank you for those wise words. And now, step with me behind the scenes halfway around the world to a sweltering December day in Port Natal, South Africa. A lean, hatless boy wearing faded dungarees shuffles slowly along the main thoroughfare, glancing about with the ill-concealed curiosity of a foreigner seeing Africa for the first time. He looks familiar to you? He should. You know him well. Very well. The kid found the heat oppressive. It wasn't the hot, dry warmth of his western prairies but a damp, clinging sultriness that's always made life in the southern hemispheres almost unbearable. A native beggar, covered with sores, stretched out a pleading hand. Arms, arms, arms. The kid's kind young face wrinkled up in a smile as he turned his empty pocket inside out. The beggar didn't understand. He clutched at the youth's clothes with one hand and stuck the other in his open mouth to show that he was hungry. Suddenly, a heavy-set man, smoking a large black cigar, strode across the square. He tossed a few coins at the beggar, who slunk away satisfied. The stranger clapped the kid on the shoulders. I reckon a little money is the only language these fellows understand, he said. And waving aside the young man's thanks, he ushered him into the shade of a native restaurant. You were wandering around out there like a lost heifer. I figure you haven't been in Africa long. Well, I just came this morning in a cattle boat from the Argentine. I worked my way across. The older man knocked the ashes from his cigar. Now, that's funny. I certainly wouldn't have taken you for a seafaring man. The kid grinned. No, he wasn't meant to be a sailor. He'd been miserable each minute of the trip seasick and miserable, and now he was in Port Natal, broke and out of a job at over 10,000 miles from home with no prospect of ever being able to get back again. If he could just raise enough money to sail back to America, he'd never leave the range again. A little sheepishly, he asked his newfound friend if there wasn't someone in Port Natal who'd be willing to give him a job. Nope, can't say that our man hesitated. Wait a minute, where you from? Oklahoma. You wouldn't happen to know anything about cow punching? The kid's face lighted up. Know about cow punching? Why, he'd learned to ride at the same time he learned to walk. But surely there weren't jobs for cowboys in South Africa. No, the man conceded there weren't. However, there might be something the kid could do. It'd be just temporary, of course, but he couldn't lose anything by trying. Now, before the conclusion of our story, a word from your announcer. The man stamped out his cigar with a flourish. You see, he said, I'm touring a little wild west show, and we can always use an extra roper. Somebody who can do a few tricks, maybe play a part once in a while. The kid frowned a little. I couldn't do any acting for you, sir. I haven't got any talent along those lines. The man brushed his objections aside. This kind of show don't take no ability. You can get by. Anyway, stick it out long enough to work your way home. The eagerness in the kid's voice betrayed his gratitude. I will, sir. I'll do my best. The man laughed heartily. Ah, oh, just call me Texas Jack. What's your name, kid? It's Rogers, sir. Will Rogers. And now this is Knox Manning inviting you to join me tomorrow at this same time for another journey into that dim half-light where chance and destiny lift men out from behind the scenes. This is a Hamilton Whitney radio production transcribed in Hollywood.